Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today, me and my trusty partner, Nate, we are headed out to, uh, it's opening day of bass season, and we're out to uh, try and track down a friend of ours who's camping out here in the wilderness. So uh, yeah, we'll see what we get up here today. So come on along. So now down this dirt path to hopefully a lake. You sure you know where you're going, sir? I think so. So we made it out onto our lake, which we will not disclose the name, just to keep our buddy's privacy, where he's staying. Ooh. Yeah, we're just battling the mosquitoes out here. They are crazy today. So yeah, let's go find our buddy Johnny. So we, uh, we made it up to our campsite, everybody. Our buddy John. And, and, and uh, past it. <laughs> and we went and past <laughs> and then back. <laughs> we hear him yelling, Nate, Nate, <laughs> Nate. <laughs> but Nate yep. has, uh, Nate's learning how to make a birch bark canoe. How to how to tie it together. How to Learn how to sew. The side, the side seams. The side seams. Which is a figure eight pattern, a double stitch as they call it in, in that market. See once again. See, that's the trouble spot. Yeah, so just help those through. Keep pulling. Help them through that. It's going to be a toughie. <laughs> Save that route. So this canoe has been made from all locally sourced materials, right from the, uh, the bush here. Um, I'm afraid to talk too much because I don't know too much about it. It's, what, 16 feet, John, or 17 feet long? 17 feet. 17 feet. And traditional craftsmanship, this is. Hey, this looks like, this doesn't look like the seat came from the forest here, though, did That's it? That's a really old seat. <laughs> I'm just joking, John. <laughs> I'm just joking. But it's going in this canoe. You're going to put but it in. The seat is probably 100 years old. See the, the screws? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, really cool. So All this the stuff's front. been hand split. And now, it's still, he's still in the process, of course. Room how you do the puppy. So that's your last hole, all right? So take it and come through. See, we're always trying to maintain that nice round for that. Yeah, you don't want it to crack. You don't want it to just crinkle, all right? Okay, so we're good. And traditionally, this was the lady's job, was to uh, sew, <laughs> was to sew the uh, boat, but we don't have any ladies out here, I'm afraid, so. My, my dad taught me how to sew. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But in the native, the uh, native indig indigenous people, right? They originally, it was the, the uh, Okay, so this is how we the finish women did the knot, this part. and now the next, we've got another section of root, we'll start it in that last hole, okay, there always has to be two roots passing through a hole, yeah. right, so you see this last one here, that's what we're going through, there are no real knots in the whole boat, it's all compression, right, mm -hmm. Come through that, and then make sure you press on the, on the front there, right? And just pull that tight. If you really want to go crazy, hog wild, you can do it again. Yeah, just through another. It can't get out of there, and once it dries, it's it's in there for good, right? So that's how you finish off that. Now, quite often. Because I didn't need that backlash, and I've gone back when I didn't need that. 
Normally you wouldn't have all this excess. It's all birch bark oh, here, this all it's birch right. off the trees yeah. locally. You can see the white, put the, the white side in. Cedar. These are cedar strips. Yep. And the bottom, what is the bottom pieces? They're, they're all cedar. They're all cedar too? They're okay. more to the uh, sapwood on the bottom and then the ribs are more to heartwood. Uh, you see the lighter ones are a bit sappy, but they might be a bit thicker. Uh, mm -hmm. But they're just hand split and bent around my favorite tree. Really? Oh, there. cool. Because I'm trying to get a 8 inch diameter round to this, to the, the edge of the boat. Yeah. That I, I pre-mark them and it's just a little scribe you make with your thumb. Yes. Um, that's where I want the bend to start. So it's got a 4 inch radius. Yeah. And so, do you have to soak them first, John? Do you soak them soak just them so overnight? But just to uh, get so they bend. Sometimes it's a green tree, like this was. Um, you can just bend them like, like that. But I normally soak them 24 hours minimum. Okay. But a lot of people steam them, etc. Originally, they were just done like that. You take a, a live tree, and uh, it's it's saturated anyway. Okay. And so it'll be very flexible. That's why you're doing it is wetting it. So I pre-bend them. A lot of people break ribs and I, I pre-bend them around my knee like it was done traditionally. And what it does is bends it a little past what its diameter is going to be. Yeah. It, it, and, then, and then it relaxes. So it conditions from that point. Out, so I'll bend it around my knee here and here and well, here. Just a little bit at a time. And then, and then up there. <coughs> then I hit the tree, and by the time it hits the tree, it just folds right around the tree. Oh, I see. Yeah. Right. So. Wow. Uh, how long have you been working on this canoe? Like, uh, roughly, how many uh, how many days would you say you have got into this? Uh, this year, uh, six weekends. Six weekends. Yeah. Uh, I did a little bit of time on the gunnels last fall, but. Uh, Normally they take about 400 hours. Wow, 400 hours. Yeah. Holy jeez. But everything is sourced from within 500 meters of exactly where we are, including the roots that Nate just got us. Thank yeah. You. Nate's, <laughs> Nate's big help with the roots. Nate, Nate just did his first root. Okay, so you get to cut this off here. Okay, let these boys get back to work on their boat. Well, we won't call it a boat. <laughs> that's insulting to... That's insulting to news. Okay, so both of those just... Anyways, just this is uh, why we come up, visit our buddy John. Cut him off. Johnny has his little, uh, he's got a tent inside. I won't get in there, he sleeps inside his teepee. But he's got a tent inside, it's a bit of a cheater. But the mosquitoes are so bad. It is crazy bad for the mosquitoes. So yeah, we'll walk around, check out the campsite here. There's my tent. 150 bucks. Brand new tent. And... Uh, Looks pretty good in there. I gotta set up my bag and stuff. We'll pull our canoes up in here. It's uh, kind of a, a really private uh, private setting, so that's why he doesn't really want people knowing what lake he's on and where he's doing this. Nate's tent here. And he's got to put his uh, he's gonna put his fly in, but it works for a good bug tent too to sit in there. And then we have this here uh, bug screen mosquito net. I got my chair in there and uh, cooler and. We can cook, we got a little stove in there, because the mosquitoes are just terrible. But anyways, that's what's going on, that's why we're up here. So, beautiful lake. Brightly the light of mine will burn out in the mountains, the rest been my rambling years. I paid my sins from the poor traveling days. Oh Lord, please, can you hear my prayers? So I rode my body up the mountain, up the mountain to a place where I can sit my rocking chair. I rode my body up the mountain, up the mountain, and I'm never going back again. I swear. Most likely the son of mine will be found. Mountains where I'm born and raised. I paid my duty as the sunny side cutie. Oh Lord, hear the sorrow in my heart. So I rode my body up the mountain to a place where I can sit my rocking chair.
rocking chair. Rode my body up the mountain. And I'm never going back again, I swear. In my rocking chair, I rode my buddy, rode buddy up the mountain. out for an evening paddle. We got my trusty uh, trolling motor back there. Nate's paddling me around the lake like a king. And uh, yeah, so we just got one line in to see if we could catch a lake trout. And uh, this lake's supposed to have some nice sized lake trout in it. And uh, yeah, tried for some bass earlier, didn't have any luck. But uh, first time on the lake, I don't know where to go fishing or what lures work or anything like that. So anyways, we're having fun. Me especially, and Nate's doing all the work. <laughs> so it'd be nice to get into a fish. But beautiful spot, and we got the whole lake to ourselves by the looks of it. Oh, Johnny's got a nice smoky fire going for us. I think I'll just stand right in it. Guaranteed no mosquitoes here. Ooh. Attitude, eh? <laughs> <laughs> chop up that cedar just the handsaw is like the sharpest thing be careful this cedar? Uh, no no this oh, one this, this okay. one right there yeah for sure or any of those that are a little thick that thing will just destroy them <laughs> yeah bugs are bad So the thinner you get, the, the less you go down <laughs> on your initial cut. Mm -hmm. So we'll just try to do the divining. Same idea as the roots though. Yeah. And just always keep moving down. You'll have a tendency to just bend up here and not move your fingers through it. But if you move your fingers through it, 
a little faster. So we got a knot there. So we're kind of working both <laughs> right through it. You hear it? It's ready to give. Come on, sweetie. Oh, there you popped. Heavy side is left. We're back on track. There we go. Oh. And that's ready for lining, right? Yeah, yeah. Nice and thin. So if you don't have your scissors with you, I always try to do one, like a knife blade. Mm -hmm. Right? So those slide in. And you do the other one in around. Fuck me. You gonna put that in the canoe now, John? Sure. So we're trying to build up this this base lining, but not come up too high because we're still doing side sewing. Right. At about yeah, about that level. But we can see spots here. These these uh, ribs are still loose, so this is perfect timing for this. Holy! Sorry about the shaky camera. This <laughs> is getting eaten alive here. Oh, cool! Right now, yeah. see that knife blade? That's the reason I. This is your kind of tail end. Yep. But the knife blade is going to help insert and then I'll have another knife blade coming in that I see. way so it just makes it slide in easier it makes it slide in easier yeah Beauty. and you always kind of want to leave this trailing edge so it's almost covering a rib so you will probably be able to to wait out both of those just like that perfect just another <laughs> thousand more and you're done <laughs> I think we're gonna boogie dude. Hey everybody, so we're on our way out, paddling out. Nate's Nate's on the uh, on the stern and uh, doing a great job. I just sit here and work the camera. But a uh, huge shout out to Johnny for uh, letting us come to his campsite, see how he is building his handmade canoe, uh, his birch bark canoe. And uh, yeah, so the bugs are bugs are pretty bad, but we we dealt with them best we could and uh, no fish we uh, we didn't no we didn't really fish too much did we went out for about an hour last night trolled around trying to catch some lake trout no luck there uh, it's kind of tricky because uh, well for starters I didn't bring didn't bring enough lures and uh, not knowing the lake and uh, the type of lures fish like all that stuff was uh, it's a challenge first time on a lake and smallmouth bass in here, not largemouth. I only brought my largemouth bass lures, so I thought there was going to be some swampy areas and places we could hit for, for fishing uh, bass, but it's all just this rocky shoreline surrounding this whole lake. Like trees just grow right to the edge of the water, and it's all rocks. It goes out maybe 10, 12 feet from shore and just drops right off. And uh, we can be 30, 40 feet from shore and uh, John, Johnny told us this lake was uh, 180 feet deep, so in places. So anyways, thanks for watching the video everybody, appreciate you taking the time. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, I never say that on my videos, I never beg anybody for nothing. <laughs> Except for Nate to paddle me out, that's all I'm begging for. See you next time, guys.